What do buyers and sellers really expect from their agent? We're going to find out today. Stay tuned. This episode of Keeping It Real is brought to you by Real Geeks. How many homes are you going to sell this year? Do you have the right tools? Is your website turning soft leads into interested buyers? Are you spending money on leads that aren't converting? Well, Real Geeks is your solution. Find out why agents across the country choose Real Geeks as their technology partner. Real Geeks was created by an agent for agents. They pride themselves on delivering a sales and marketing solution so that you can easily generate more business. Their agent websites are fast and built for lead conversion with a smooth search experience for your visitors. Real Geeks also includes an easy to use agent CRM. So once a lead signs up on your website, you can track their interest and have great follow-up conversations. Real Geeks is loaded with a ton of marketing tools to nurture your leads and increase brand awareness. Visit realgeeks.com forward slash keeping it real pod and find out why realtors come to Real Geeks to generate more business. Again, visit realgeeks.com forward slash keeping it real pod. And now, on to our show. Hello and welcome to another episode of Keeping It Real, the largest podcast made by real estate agents and for real estate agents. My name is DJ Paris. I'm your guide. I'm your host through the show. And in just a moment, we're going to be speaking with Amy Kaur. But before we get to Amy, just a couple of reminders. Oh, actually got an announcement. So we finally have an Instagram account, which sounds silly. Everybody has an Instagram account, but we actually created one very diligently and intentionally so that we could provide more content to you, the listeners. So we have a team now that goes through our episodes and clips out the very best moments. And we post those video moments, usually 30 to 60 seconds on the various social channels, including Instagram. So we're on TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Twitter, um, probably some other places. But anyway, please follow us on Instagram, which is at Top Agent Interviews. At Top Agent Interviews. Every day we'll be serving you up a short form video with a tip from one of our great, great guests. Please also tell a friend about our podcast. Keep us expanding by telling other realtors about Keeping It Real. So send them over to our website, keepingitrealpod.com. Every episode we've ever done, we have almost 500 now can all be streamed right from a browser window. Okay, guys, let's get to the main event, my conversation with the great Amy Kaur. All right, today on the show, we have Amy Kaur with At Properties in Chicago, also Christie's International Real Estate. Now let me tell you more about Amy. Amy Core oversees the development and delivery of branded coaching, training, and business planning solutions that help agents consistently and sustainably grow their business, resulting in genuine agent satisfaction and a thriving brokerage culture. Amy's curriculum tackles every stage of the agent life cycle from broker fundamentals to leveling up to top producer status, to building and running successful teams. Her programming is practical, engaging, and actionable based on 20 years of experience as a, as a successful, sorry about that, successful agent of her own right and award-winning managing broker. She was born and raised in San Francisco. Amy graduated from Santa Clara University, lives in Wilmette, which is basically Chicago, uh, with her <laughs> husband and her two daughters. Guys, this is a really special episode for me. I am very, very honored to bring Amy on. Um, if you're if you're not from the Chicagoland area, most of our audience is not. At Properties started as an independent brokerage and has uh, as quickly or, or over their life cycle of their business has become one of the most successful brands for real estate and independent brands in the entire country. So this is really, really exciting. Um, we're, we're huge fans of At Properties. Amy, welcome. Oh, by the way, everyone go visit <laughs> atproperties.com, atproperties.com. Also, Amy does a show every week with Kevin Van Eck, and that is at uh, on it. Follow her on Instagram, at Coffee with Amy and Kevin. 
So at <laughs> Coffee with Ke- with Amy and Kevin. I will have links to all of these in the show notes so you don't have to write this down. Amy, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for such a nice intro. You made me sound so good. <laughs> Well, you you are incredibly impressive, and I am so so happy to to chat with you today. Um, so, let's. I want to hear about you. I want to know your okay. journey. So, tell us how you started in real estate. How did you get involved? Yeah, no, that's a great question. A lot of people usually start with how the heck did a California girl decide? Yeah, to how'd move you go the from Midwest? the West? <laughs> how'd you not end up in the tech world? Yeah. yeah. Well, I actually I kind of started in the tech world, but um, yeah. So I actually moved from California out to uh, Chicago uh, a couple years out of uh, college, and I actually started in technology. Uh, I was moved out here by a tech firm and um, enjoyed it. You know, did technology for a while with a company called SSA. In fact, I looked them up to see if they still existed. They were defunct and bought by somebody else. So oh well. Um, but then I moved to a, a cool startup. And I think it was 98 or 99 um, and worked a ton in tech and it was super interesting, worked so many hours. Um, but after about three years, I kind of was at this point where, you know, I was getting old enough to think, what the heck do I want to do with the rest of my life? And is this, you know, is this what interests me? And I was, I didn't read the, what color is your parachute, but I was definitely trying to figure that out. And um, my now husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, kind of just planted the seed. And he said, you know, you've always seemed like you kind of like real estate and, you know, like looking at houses. And I wasn't in, um, I didn't own anything at at that point in time. And I thought, huh, that's kind of interesting. So I explored it a little bit. Next thing you know, I enrolled um, at um, the place on Halstead Street in Chicago. Darn it. Who's the gentleman who owned that company? The Yellow Hanson. Yeah, Hanson really? Hanson Real Estate, yes. Yes, yes. So I, I had no clue what I was doing, right? So I decided, all right, I'm going to go ahead. I still work full time, but I went, you know, in the evenings to study and get my license. And then I got um, I got my license. I got a uh, license and I just, uh, I actually, I don't know if you know Jan Smith, uh, who owned J.A. Smith and Associates in Bucktown. She actually, her old office is now our, uh, at Properties Bucktown office. She was my first uh, managing broker. Uh, I love her. I still see her often. Um, and I just kind of hung my license with her because she was a friend of uh, our family members. And I kind of didn't even know what I was getting into. Um, but I was sort of excited by the idea of I was working so many hours in technology. And what I remember hearing at the time, it was like 2002 and the market was moving was, you know what, as if you work really hard, you can be really successful and you're your own boss. And so I found that really interesting because I was working so, so hard to make somebody else a lot of money. And I loved my people and and where I was at, but I just felt like, you know what, if I'm going to do it, now's the time. I don't have kids, you know, I'm still single. Why not make this change? So I jumped in and um, worked with Jan for a little bit and then moved over to a different brokerage firm. I worked with Susie Miner for about a year, um, which was great. That's where I went, met one of my very best friends who really kind of mentored me. Uh, and then she and I moved to App Properties in 2002. Um, no, sorry, 2004. Um, so, you know, I've been with App for a really long time. I was probably maybe agent 150 at the time. So wow. think about how far I'm like blown away by how far we've come. If you really think about it. I mean, I remember being in the basement of the Clybourne office selling real estate in the city and now, now look at us as a company, but it's been a really phenomenal journey. Um, I feel really fortunate and lucky that, you know, I've just sort of been given the opportunities that I have in, in this industry because I'm, I'm just really passionate about it. It's it's an incredible story, and I I'm curious. So, at Properties has, gosh, uh, I I don't know more than three thousand agents. I I don't know here in the local Chicago area, um, right. at least three thousand, probably more. Yep. You're certainly one of the biggest players, and and yet, uh, you know, it, it, this sort of grassroots built business, which, mm-hmm. um, you know, competes with Compass and, and, mm-hmm. and Coldwell Banker and, at, you know, and, and all by Baird and Warner and all of these other uh, big players in the space. And you guys came in like, and just sort of took over. And, and what I, what I see ha- having, ha- uh, what I saw have 
has happened um, in in here in Chicago is this the branding of at properties is so immersive. What it does, mm-hmm. so at properties did something that I thought was brilliant, which as a marketer, they mm-hmm. basically said, "What what is?" And again, I don't know the conversations that led to this, so I'm just I'm just pre- presupposing, but um, they basically you know, took one of the deepest, uh, you know, experiences uh, in, in human existence, which is love. Mm-hmm. And they said, mm-hmm. we want to brand around love. We want, yep. when people think about our brand, uh, mm-hmm. when they think about buying homes, when they think about our agents, when they think about our, our sort of, you know, processes, we want to be the happy, loving, fun sort of group. And mm-hmm. they they focused on the, the one word love. And that became your brand. And mm-hmm. it just absolutely took off. And I, I've never, I've yet to see another brand in any industry capitalize on love um, mm-hmm. and and use it as their mascot, as their brand. I mean, it is literally your mascot. Mm-hmm. And it is such a strong message because of course, all of us have a connection to that word, mm-hmm. um, you know, and we see it and you guys have it all over the city. You, you you can't go here in Chicago. You can't go too far in, at least here within the city uh, limits without seeing the word love somewhere with the at properties kind of logo there. And they don't even necessarily talk about real estate in most no. of the branding efforts. That's what's yep. really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love, but that's I, I also agree. intentional, you know, it's also intentional. So I wasn't in the room when it happened, but I was here when it did. And, you know, we were talking earlier about Thad Wong, you know, I think one of the things that you, you know, we have to incredibly credit him for is that, you know, he is the mastermind from the very beginning with so much of our branding and marketing strategy, Natasha Patla, who's, you know, our CMO now is incredible and the two of them together, but he really drives that it's, it's what he loves to do. And, you know, all of our fun campaigns, if you've watched them throughout the years, you know, we don't take ourselves too seriously. I think that is really sort of at the root of our culture is we laugh a lot. And, you know, we joke a lot, even in a lot of our management, um, you know, our different management uh, meetings that we have, uh, you know, we just really have an enjoyment of working together. And we really want that communicated out, not just to our agents, but to the consumer. And, you know, because when we're selling real estate, yes, it's a transaction, but think about what is related to the home and what everybody thinks about home ownership and life. And so he was sitting down with Natasha and he was like, I want to come up with a word that would just resonate with everybody. Something that everyone, you know, can relate to. And he ultimately, I think even said everything that's, you know, something that everyone would love. And then he was like, wait, that's it. That's the word. Yeah. And, you know, we use our intention was we're going to use it as a, you know, a campaign. We obviously aligned ourselves with Matthew Hoffman, who was the artist who actually designed the script for love, which we then, you know, licensed and purchased through him. Um, And we just started it as as something that we thought would be a cool campaign for, I don't know if it was 2016 or 2017. And then it was just like the response was crazy. So then we were like, okay, why don't we start taking this a little bit further? And we do a lot of the love magnets. People like to put those on their car. And I remember I was driving somewhere and I pulled up into uh, to get gas somewhere in the in the su- suburbs. And I pulled in and this guy pulls up next to me and kind of this kind of beat up car. And I'm like, okay, I don't know what he's, he's wanting from me. And he rolls down his window because I'm pumping gas. And he was just like, where did you get that love magnet? I've been looking for one forever. And I was like, you know what, buddy? Today is your lucky day. I'm going to give you my love magnet. You can have mine. Yeah. And so it just became this thing that we realized had this amazing experience and it created this amazing emotion for people. So we have continued to use it, but we really try to use it in a way too that you know, really pushes ahead of our brand. Um, yeah. Like when COVID hit, we started doing signs that were love is the unity in your community. And, yeah. you know, it didn't even have at properties on it, but it was like everybody just knew. And you sometimes I think when you lead with the right intention to focus on others, to give back, to figure out how can we help other people instead of serving ourselves first, the universe opens up for you. And I really do feel like that's one of the things that I have learned and developed you know, not just in my career, but as a human working here at At, you know, because we all work really hard. But I think we're always asking, like, 
especially for our agents, what are they needing from us right now? You know, how can we support them, you know, as independent contractors in, you know, great markets, but also challenging markets. And so, you know, the love is extended amongst one another, but then it, you know, and it's also a great branding opportunity for our agents to use as they're trying to connect with their clients, you know? And um, so it's, it's kind of taken a life of its own. And so many of our affiliates, it's one of the things that, they really anchor to and have just really loved loved having the opportunity to use in their own communities. Yeah, I would love. I would also love to talk about. <laughs> uh, sorry for pardon the pun. Uh, would love to talk about teams because yeah. uh, switching gears kind kind of abruptly only because sure. you know this year with with rates being where they are and and inventory being less than what what uh, most markets would would prefer um we are now seeing a lot of agents moving around right agents are starting to feel oh maybe i'm if if they're, if they're on a team maybe they're not on the right team maybe they're mm-hmm. at a different brokerage maybe there's better options and what what we're seeing is this this fractionization of agents um the 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 migration of agents who are the sort of uh, on their own, maybe thinking, maybe I would be better in, in a collective. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe I would be better in a group versus mm-hmm. just me running everything myself. And mm-hmm. At Properties has obviously embraced uh, the, the team mentality. They, there's mm-hmm. lots of teams at At Properties, lots of teams at, at many brokerages. Um, mm-hmm. I'm curious on what suggestions you might have to agents who are thinking about joining a team or creating a team. Ah, good. Two very different kind of mindsets. But, very different. You know, I think um, I think it's, uh, you know, so first of all, I think that, you know, our industry, we are definitely seeing that the team model, you know, is definitely not going away. If, if anything else, I feel like it's getting a lot stronger. And I think, you know, for a couple of reasons, I think just the speed at which real estate is going now with technology, even if you think 20, 25 years ago, where we were just on the cusp of things being in the MLS, things being electronic. But I remember when I first started, I would still go and get signatures at night, right? Or the pace was just not quite as fast. And I feel like the consumer expectation was also not quite so high. I mean, think about what they expect now from print advertising to digital advertising to a full-blown marketing strategy to where is the exposure? You know, there's a lot of expectation. And so at some point as a sole practitioner, you know, we can only handle so much, right? Because we're having to move so fast in order to compete with everybody else. So I think at some point, what I say to so many agents is that if you're gonna grow, there's only one of you. So you have to figure out what is going to be your plan to scale. And you know, and sometimes and what I oftentimes see is that they don't always scale the right way. You know, I think it's sometimes just getting bodies to help is the answer where, you know, we actually have a two-day workshop that I built with a consultant that is a team's workshop. And it's for team leaders for them to really kind of understand like, am I doing this the right way? Because oftentimes they just sort of develop a team uh, and have some people that are sort of all working together, but you know, no one has ever really evaluated what's the strategy behind this. And so what we really help a lot of team leaders take a look at and what I would encourage most team leads to do is take a step back and see where your team is at. But what I would have them do is to almost take a sheet of paper and write down on one side, what are the things that I like to do most and I am most effective at? And then on the other side, what do I not like to do or what should I not be doing because it's not the best use of my time? So many of the team leads that I see and consult and work with, you know, they're great rainmakers. They're great at bringing in the business, reaching out to clients. They are phenomenal at that. What they aren't always great at is managing the rest of their people, maybe creating structure for their people. And so what I find is they're so busy out getting the business and fueling the pipeline, but then there are people who are feeling lost because that team lead just doesn't have the time to help to develop them. Or what they also don't always have is a good operations person. Operations are key, right? You've got the person who's out drumming up the business, but somebody has to be the backbone to make sure that business is being serviced correctly. And so, you know, I really encourage agents to take a step back 
and start looking at what roles do I need for the type of team that I've either midway built or really want to build. And sometimes what you can look at is some of your people, you've got really great talent, they're just in the wrong spot. And yeah. so, you know, we've we've got um, lots of different, you know, ways for team leaders to really look at stuff. But I feel like sometimes they just sort of throw people into a group and there isn't really a strategy behind the growth. And so anybody who's, you know, has a team, I would really encourage that, um, you know, and I can dive into it for hours, but really just take a step back and understand at the end of the day, what do you want to be doing as team lead? Uh, and what is your role going to be? Because you cannot be everything. And you need to figure out what roles need to be filled. You fill yours, and then you find great people to fill those other spots. And I will tell you, you will create some amazing synergy. Um, so that's really, I, I would say, for team leads, for people who are thinking about being on a team, you have to un ask yourself, you know, what is the reason for being on a team? Is it simply because I can't figure out how to fish for myself and I don't like reaching out and prospecting? Uh, before that is necessarily your only factor, I almost would even ask you, is this the right business for you? Right? right? Because a big part of being in real estate, let's face it, you've got to learn how to fish on your own. And I'm also a big believer of you cannot expect a team leader to just hand you leads. I think the best run teams, uh, it's not that you won't get them. But at the end of the day, that isn't their sole responsibility. And that might be some team models uh, of overflow. But my thought is, is that if that ever goes away, if that overflow or the Zillow leads right. that they purchase, if those dry up and suddenly the team is struggling, to me, it's all hands on deck and you better know how to fish. So the best teams, I think, are ones where team members come in and learn how to cultivate business from the best, who is their team leader. And that team leader teaches them. And then I think, yes, definitely there's overflow. Um, but, you know, so I think when you're a team member or somebody who wants to go onto a team, I would ask those questions. I would, you know, and if somebody just says, hey, we're going to give you leads, that's great in the short term. But if you're in this business for the long term, you've got to learn how to develop your own book of business. That's your biggest safety net, because at some point, if that team goes away and you're standing there and you've never developed the tools that it takes to be a great agent, you're going to be starting from the ground up again. Yeah, I've, I've, I've had many, many people on the show over the years who have talked about purchasing leads versus handing leads out uh, organically versus, you know, working referral based business. Of course, everybody uh, who, who's listening would love to have 100% of their business be referral based. Right. And of course, um, that is ultimately the goal because it's the most cost effective way to, uh, to, to run that that this business, um, but it takes a tremendous amount of effort to get there. I, I, but I also think it's something we probably don't talk about enough, which is raving fans. Like how do, mm -hmm. how do you encourage your agents to, because at properties here in the, the Chicago market is if they're, if they're not the the highest producing real estate brokerage, they're number two. They're number one or number two. So, mm -hmm. you know, we have an opportunity here to talk to Amy and ask her, what are you telling your your agents uh, about um, how to create raving fans? Yeah, um, I always tell people that you need to focus on the give. Um, you know, I think as agents. You know, especially when we're new in the business and I was there, I still remember that panic attack of am I going to be able to survive and really grow a career? And there's a lot of self-doubt. I mean, we have all of these CEOs out there, right? They're CEOs of their own business, but they sometimes barely believe in themselves. And so, and it's, and I think for a lot of them, they feel like, God, I have to go out and ask for business. I have to ask that question. Do you know anybody who's looking to buy and sell? And so I actually removed that from the equation sort of all together. Yeah. My big belief is, look, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, focus on the person in front of you and figure out what can I give to them today that's going to change their life? You know, maybe even just a little bit, you know, and I play this fun game. I, we have a program called um, the Road to Rolex, and we've got uh, over 100 agents that are in the program yeah. for the year. And it's an accountability program. And they're in small groups of five. And they meet for the entire year and I am coaching them. Like I coach each of the groups kind of once a quarter. And so I was meeting with some of them and I said, here's what I want you to think about doing. I want you to like, we have this amazing opportunity known as social media. 
Facebook, Instagram. We get to know more about the people that are in our sphere than ever before. Use it. Don't use it in a bad way or feel like it's self-serving, but figure out what's going to move the needle with people. You know, I had a great example. I had an agent who had uh, somebody on Facebook who posted, we're going on spring break and our, um, uh, our dog sitter or the place where we bring our dog, it's full. And now we're in a panic. We need somebody to come and, you know, uh, watch our dog for a week. So one of this agent who happened to know this woman who posted it on Facebook, I said, be the connector focus on the give. This person needs something. Do you know anybody? She said, I actually have a girlfriend who does dog sitting part time. I said, awesome. Um, or actually she told me this scenario. So she said she connected um, and called the woman who does dog sitting. And she said, are you available the week of the 27th? How much do you charge? Can I get this person in contact with you? So sure enough, yep, it worked. She called this other person who posted on Facebook and said, hey, I have somebody that can take care of your dog while you're gone for the week. So the beauty of that situation, she just had the opportunity to make authentic contact with two people in her database. And all she did was focus on the give. Focus on how can I, you know, create an opportunity for others. And maybe she didn't get a deal that day, but I am telling you, if you do that all day long, that is going to change the tra trajectory of your business. It's that law of reciprocity thing, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I, I do good for others uh, without the expectation of doing good to me, um, mm -hmm. but people are pretty hardwired to want to return favors. Um, yeah. So this idea of being real estate adjacent, I always, mm -hmm. I always like as this, like, I'm going to be, yes, I'm going to help you with your real estate transaction. That's obviously the job of the realtor, but all yeah. the other stuff that exists, all the ancillary, uh, you know, things that, that come up, up, uh, or hey, I need a pet sitter for my dog. Totally, right? like, and it's all related to home. You know, it's, it's all so related. Yeah. Well, it, I always if, say. If, um, sorry, no. I was just going to say. I always say to agents, it isn't just the buy and sell. It's everything in between. That in between is the secret sauce. If you take care of them in between those deals, like not only are they going to work with you again, but think about all the opportunity that that comes with that. Um, and it's you know it's taking the transaction out of it. It's really focusing on the relationship piece. And and yeah, it takes a little bit of lead time. You know, I think sometimes agents get a little antsy with it. Like, well, nothing's happening right now. It's like just continue the action and it will happen. It just, you know, if you throw something out into the universe, at some point it has to respond. You know, just sometimes right. as agents, we get impatient. So it's just let it ride, keep doing it. And, and you'll see the change. I, I've seen it in agents that I've coached over the years, you know, um, and some of the biggest agents that I've really seen and work with are the best connectors. I call them super connectors. You know, they're the person that is called for everything. Do you have a guy for this? Do you have a girl for this? You know, who would you recommend in this situation? It's like, ah, you got to call Amy or you got to call DJ because he knows everybody, yeah. right? That's right. who you want to be. And, and then the rest takes care of itself. You, you really want to bring people into your ecosystem. You, you want mm -hmm. to create your own ecosystem so that a home buyer or seller or homeowner or, or, or renter, anyone, um, whenever they have needs around, you know, home related items that you become obviously the person that they, that they go to. And, and therefore it's, 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 it's sort of a simple, but difficult thing, right? Like, so you have to, <laughs> right. you have to, it's, it's simple. It's like pushups, like good idea, hard. Um, <laughs> so I, so I, I, I think, I think creating an ecosystem is really, really important because what you're really doing is you're solving these micro problems mm -hmm. along the way. And maybe they're not Mike, maybe they're massive problems, but you're solving problems outside of real estate, outside of the transaction along the way. And that's to me, I see that is really the job. The job yeah. is how do I solve problems in between transactions for yeah. or how to provide value slash solve problems for for my, uh, my my sphere of influence? How do I do that? Because if I do that, I, I can make a reasonable assumption that a vast majority of those people, if I'm consistently adding value to their lives, are going to feel... Uh, and, and let's just be honest, they're going to feel that they owe you the yes. opportunity <laughs> to hire you for, uh, for, for a brokerage transaction. So, yeah. for, so I, I, I've thought that, that, you know, the, the, the home selling process is, is its own thing. 
And then, but, and we focus a lot on that because that's what we're in the middle of at any given moment when we're dealing with a client. But if we can focus, if we could really expand to focus on uh, providing value outside of that transaction as much as possible, it's actually, number one, it's really fun because you can, you can, you know, uh, accumulate and, and, you know, start to put all of these different vendors and services together and start to create these, these guides that you can then project out to, uh, to, to your, your clients. But you can be reaching out to them consistently saying, what's going on with your home? How's everything going? Do you need anything? Mm -hmm. Like you can actually reach out to them, not ask, like you were saying, not asking, hey, are you thinking about buying or selling? But hey, how's everything going with your home? Do you guys need anything? I've got the best plumbers. I've got the best, et cetera. Um, I, I think that is so tremendously valuable because number one, every homeowner always has projects that are ongoing, right? Like mm-hmm. we all have ongoing projects. If you are a homeowner, there's something that you're like, I need to get to that <laughs> one room and paint that one wall and totally. fix that one thing. And everybody's got that. So mm-hmm. if, 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 if I was an agent right now, I mean, I am an agent, but I'm not a practicing agent. <laughs> if, I, if I was a practicing agent today, what I might do if I was in between sales, and I'm curious to get your thoughts on this, mm-hmm. I might come up with my vendor list of all the people that mm-hmm. I've worked with and, you know, different services related to home, you know, home stuff. And I would have that list and I would be calling my friends saying, hey, just checking in. Are there any projects currently in your home that are unfinished or are you need to work on or, uh, or, or, or hey, it, also if you want to me to to check the value of your home, I can do that too. But I yep. just wanted to see how everything's going with the home. I'm just checking in on the home. How's it going? You need anything? I'm going to send. I mean, could you imagine? Nobody has ever made that call to me, by the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would and be. And here's what I want you. To, here's what I want to identify. No one has ever made that call. So Kevin and I just did a coffee last week, and the first thing on the coffee was pick up the phone. I'm telling you, if you were asking me which agent is going to win this year, it's the one that picks up the phone and yes. starts, you know, face to face, man to man, voice to voice contact. You know, it's yes. the fastest way to getting to a yes or a no, and we're so afraid of no. But what if the answer is yes? And you're missing all of those yeses. That's what drives me crazy. And it's funny because um, agents that I do coach that get really nervous about a, the phone, and there's a lot of them that do. Like they can talk to anybody until the cows come sure. home. But the minute that they feel like, oh my god, I'm calling somebody and I'm interrupting them, and in, in particular, call, even and also if they haven't been following up with them, you know, yes, consistently in back. the past, they're like, oh, I haven't called that person in a year. It's going to feel weird. It's good, yeah. Yeah. It's like they would rather like rip off 10 band-aids off their arm as opposed to have to make that call, you know? But so it's funny. So what I had encouraged a lot of agents to do is, you know, there's those um, straight to voicemail apps, uh, slide dial. And yep. so I, I said, you know what, let's warm up with this. And yes. they, so then they would push back with on me and they would say, yeah, but they know that I'm going straight to voicemail. So then I say, then just own it, call them and say, Hey, Bob, you know what? I wanted to give you a phone call and I wanted to go straight to voicemail because I know yeah. oftentimes you're in the courthouse, but gosh, I would really love to connect with you and see how you and Susie are doing. How are things going with the house? Is there, to your point, DJ, is there anything that you guys are thinking about doing this spring? And can I provide any vendor recommendations? Give me a call back when you have a second. There is nothing that will ever replace the sound of my voice, the tone, the in- inflection, my excitement and energy to be trying to connect with them again. I don't care how hard you try, how many exclamation points on text, you're just never going to get it. And there's so many agents who are so afraid to do it. It drives me crazy. You, you are so right about the voice uh, straight to text, uh, vo- voice uh, like the slide aisle straight to voice yeah. thing. I, you are so absolutely right. So I, I want to make this point because you you just made it. I want to I want to reiterate it, and it was a good one. People want to hear your voice. They also you if you want to do a straight to voicemail via slide dial or or any of these other uh, straight to voicemail services, and you might think, oh gosh, like Amy said, well, what if they know that I'm not actually calling them, I'm going straight to voicemail? Here's how you would say it. And Amy just gave a great script there. What I, I would add to that as well is saying, hey, didn't want to buggy. I know you're at work. I, I, I'm yeah. shooting this right into your voicemail, but super excited to catch up with you, you know, blah, blah. And then, and so you don't have to, I always say this about, it's kind of like the dating apps. I, I always say, 
<laughs> you don't have to worry about being perceived as a creep if you're not a creep. Like if you're right. not a creep, you don't have to worry about it. You know? Yeah. So so if you're going to someone's voicemail, you don't have to pretend that you're not. You can explain yeah. why you are doing that because you don't want to bug them. Yeah. And by the way, most people aren't going to answer the phone anyway. So you're going to get right. their voicemail. So it's still going to go to their voicemail. Right. And yeah. all of you out there, you can thank us when you try this later today and you get a client calling back who's super excited to talk to you. Right. <laughs> but but I mean, is, isn't it really this idea of value, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it's, I, 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 I've been, we've done 500 of these episodes and I would love to say that, uh, that I've, you know, sort of, uh, extracted this, this uh, secret elixir of how to be a successful real estate agent over all these episodes. And it seems to be, if, if if somebody were to put me on stage and say, what did you learn from interviewing hundreds of top 1% agents in the country? I would say they work really hard and they're constantly thinking about how they can add to their customers' lives, like Love add it. some mm-hmm. sort of value. And that's pretty much it. Like mm-hmm. it, it, there's mm-hmm. a lot there. I mean, th- with those two yeah. things, that's kind of everything and it's not easy, yeah. but it's this consistently, how, like, like Amy, like you were saying, how can I add value today? I mean, it can be as simple as, you know, if sometimes it's it's funny too because people are like, well, how do I how do I find more um, leads? How do I get more leads? It's like, well, okay, do you go to the grocery store? Yes. Okay. Do you run into people at the grocery store? Well, there's people at the grocery store. Okay. I try not to. I hate when I hear them say, "I try not to." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and I'm not saying you should talk to everyone at the grocery store, but I'm saying if right. you can think about, forget about leads, if you think about smiling at people or mm-hmm. or or acknowledging them or complimenting them or saying something affirming um that that is genuine authentic you know something that moves you like i was i was at um a committee meeting with the chicago association of realtors yesterday and a friend of mine uh, or or one of the people on my committee had purple hair and i was like i got to remember to tell her i love that purple hair mm-hmm. um if if there's always ways we can add value to people's lives. And if we consistently do that, whether it's a compliment, whether it's being of service, whether it's, you know, checking in on them, this is what wins the race. Um, the, mm-hmm. It's always about effort, I think. It's effort and it's care, you know? Yeah. I mean, and you know, you had said there was, uh, what you would say about agents is, you know, constantly providing value and working really hard. But I would also say really being authentic. You know, I think as agents, when you are looking at top producers, and I'm not saying you shouldn't look at sort of your real estate heroes or you see a top producer, you know, in your office and you say, dang it, you know, I really want to be like so-and-so. Yes, there are certain things about that person that you're attracted to, but don't lose yourself because The thing is, is that, and this is what I also say to agents is, look, you have a great engine behind you with At Properties Christie's International Real Estate. You know, we've got a lot of stuff that you are able to go into a listing presentation or sit down with a buyer and feel super confident. But here's what I want you to work on. Who are you and why are you bringing them the value? Because the thing is, is that they're going to pick you because of you. Probably not much of anything else. Yes, you've got all of this other great stuff, which is going to add to that confidence. And, you know, I think what I love the most in coaching is when I get to that point where I can work with an agent and I help them find themselves. You know, not everybody can just pick up the phone and be super confident and be able to say certain things. Doesn't mean you're not going to be successful or doesn't mean that you don't have to start slow. Start with a slide dial and be as nervous as all get out. It's okay. It gets it's okay to, over it, time. It, it's okay to be where you are. Yes. So in other words, if you are and scared, up, if, you, you know? if you're ner- messing up, I, I mean, look, you know the rea- the reality of it is it, I, it the the phrase that I've hated my entire professional career career has been the fake it till you make it. I I don't like that phrase yeah. because it it implies that we're going to pretend that yeah. we have competence when we do not. Um, mm-hmm. I I think I think it's way better to acknowledge insecurity, fear. Uh, I think people relate to that. I think people yeah. now. Ultimately, we want to develop skill and we want to, you know, hone those skills and, and develop those. But I think the being authentic, if, if I could make any sort of suggestion to our audience, whatever you're into, I don't care what it is, whatever you're passionate about outside of real estate, 
somehow figure out a way to incorporate that into your real estate practice. If you're into horses, if you're if you're into racing cars, totally. whatever it might your be. Your dogs, whatever your it dog, is. Yeah. Your kids. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Bring that, figure out a way to Im- put that into your, bring that into your business and you will attract other people who of course also have those interests, but also people, we, we, we demand authenticity from our, from our, our service providers. We want to know what you are like. We want to know what you do at home. You don't, you can set boundaries around what you're willing to share. Privacy of course is important. But, you know, we want to know who you are as a human being. And thankfully, we have technology that allows us to, to share those uh, things. But I, I, people want to know who they are working with. They don't mm-hmm. – the, the skill is important, of course, but also the human side of it. Who are you as a human being? And if you yeah. can demonstrate that along the way of also providing value as, as you continue to, you know, work with your clients, y- y- you're just going to have a massive success. Yeah, I think especially just because, you know, we are in an industry that is so personal for our clients. You know, I mean, there is personality related to, you know, the selling of a property. You know, when we go in and we are evaluating their house and giving them a price, you know, there's a lot of sensitivity to that because there's a lot of pride. And when, you know, when the price isn't maybe what they expected it to be, you know, it's a personal thing for them, right? Because they believe, you know, gosh, but this was so special to me. I don't see why everybody else can see it. So, you know, I say a lot that I think one of the biggest things for, uh, you know, being in real estate is that high emotional component and really being able to lean in and understand, you know, who th- these people are because it is personal under un- unlike other industries. And so, you know, back to your point, DJ, you know, the more authentic you can be and the more that they can, you know, you don't want to show them all of your flaws, but like when they're feeling a little imperfect, if they're feeling like, ah, okay, I'm seeing the human side of this person, I feel more comfortable sharing my imperfections or some of the things we're worried about, uh, cause they have to open up about a lot. And, you know, so I, I think as agents, again, you know, it's the more you are, you, you are going to attract the people that are like you, and you're going to actually enjoy working with them more instead of working with people that are constantly pushing back on you or not believing, you know, what you're saying. Um, but it kind of starts with us figuring out who we are. And, and I remind my agents all the time, you are CEO, you get to pick out all this stuff. You get to decide, you know, what you want to wear, who you want to focus on, how you want to prospect, you know, you get to pick out the how, but you still have to do. And, you know, and sometimes it, it takes a little while, you know, and what we were saying before, you're going to screw up, you're going to feel stupid, you're going to get nervous. But, you know, I was talking to an agent earlier this morning, who just got her first luxury opportunity. And she was like, I was so nervous, I had to wear all black, because I felt like I was sweating everywhere. And she said, but what I told myself, is that this is a growth moment. I am growing as I'm sitting here terrified. And I said, yes, you are. <laughs> well, that, that's true. Both things can be true. I am scared and I'm excited. And both of those things can be be uh, present at the same time. Um, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think it is so much about uh, going all the way back to giving, right? We, 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 yeah always come back to value. Like how do we improve people's lives, right? We're going to help them buy a home. We're going to help them sell a home. We're going to help them rent a home. We're we're also going to uh, allow them to, um, to come to us when they need, uh, you know, things fixed, things, things moved. Um, and, and, and we're going to let them in on our, uh, how we, how we cope with the ups and downs of, Mm -hmm you know, a, a real estate transaction, for example. So I, I think the emotional sort of component or the emotional maturity of, of, of an agent is really important to be able to anticipate mm-hmm. the emotional reaction of like disappointment in advance. So I think really good agents, I'm curious to get your thoughts on this. No. Okay. I'm about to deliver some rough news because <laughs> yeah. we, we know that at any part, at some point in every transaction, there's bad news. Every transaction, there's one, at least one piece of bad news. So this is something we get to practice a lot. So the, my point, what I'm trying to get to is if you can identify, okay, I know what the experience I've, uh, or, or I'm going to ask other agents who have been through this kind of thing, what's a typical client reaction to mm-hmm. 
you know, not getting a home or, or having an offer come in goofy or whatever, whatever the, the, the bad news is being able to, to predict that that may be happening really makes, cause I, cause I, I like, I bought a home a few years ago, um, was not my first purchase and I had forgotten because it had been a few, several years. <laughs> you forgot the bought. pain. I, and the I had forgotten the pain. <laughs> And it was a really pretty yeah. easy transaction. And yeah. I was like, it was so stressful. And yeah. I was, and I was thinking, God, I forgot. I forgot how stressful this is. I'm, I mean, I'm not yeah. a practicing agent, so I don't know what a lot of our, our agents know, but boy, I really needed somebody to like, kind of give me a hug at certain times during the, totally. uh, you know, a, 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 a metaphorical hug, I guess. But but the point is, is I think agents, it's such, it's, it, you know, we're talking about a huge financial, you know, huge financial decisions here with, with respect mm-hmm. to home ownership could be the largest financial purchase possibly in, in, you know, in, in the family, but, um, understanding what the emotions are that are at stake and understanding mm-hmm. how to cope with those ups and downs, I think really separates the wheat from the chaff, um, with respect to top producers. I agree. And I think what I would also say is, and this is something that I feel like I had on sort of my own journey of growth in my professional career, is I sort of felt like, God, I'm supposed to just know how to do all of this stuff if I'm going to be really good. And, you know, what I've really learned is, you know, you've got to continue developing your craft. And, you know, you don't come out of the gate brand new knowing how to really be really uh, solid when it comes to the emotional piece. To your point, DJ, people may not necessarily know like, how do I respond or what should I anticipate? But, you know, continuing to learn, read books, uh, get mentored by other agents, but then also it's just, you kind of have to go through enough transactions to then know, ah, I know what's going to happen this time. But one of the, um, people that I really love is it it's Chris Voss, right? With a V, um, mm-hmm. the FBI, uh, hostage, investi- yeah. uh, hostage negotiator. negotiator. So I read his, yeah. yeah. So I read his book and we actually did kind of a, a workshop, Kevin and I, where we took some of his top tips and kind of tried to apply them specifically to real estate situations and to sort of like how to use his scripting. Cause we aren't saving a life, but sometimes we are, we're saving a house. Right. Sure. And, uh, one of the ones that I love to your point, DJ was, I think it was called the accusation audit. And, you know, where it it kind of is like, look, DJ, I know you're not going to love me. You're going to be really upset when you hear this news. Um, You know, it's sort of where you put that into their psyche, where you're already setting them up for a level of disappointment, or they're already thinking, well, I can't be that disappointed, Amy, right? So you kind of, you, but that was a technique that I probably used at certain points without even knowing it. But once I learned that, I thought, oh my gosh, I use it on my kids, I wish I could use it on my dogs. I use it on my husband. You know what I mean? But suddenly it was like, this is a communication technique that I can use that allows me to get the person on the other side prepared for something so bad so that when I deliver the actual news, it doesn't feel quite as awful, right? And he has a lot of interesting techniques. Yeah. Chris Voss, this is the Never Split the Difference author, yeah. um, fa- famous uh, FBI hostage negotiator guy. Um Definitely read this book, but but this this is what we're talking about: emotional um, sort of uh, competence, I would say, or emotional mm-hmm. coping competence. Mm-hmm. Like real estate agents, you know, if if anything, yes, they're going to sharpen their skills with respect to you know market related data, right? They're going to mm-hmm. know, hopefully, they're going to know their 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 numbers, um, but also knowing sort of the touch points of the clients, understanding sort of what are the motivations, what are the emotions, what are the person personality types and trying to cope ahead. I, I like the word cope ahead saying, okay, <laughs> tomorrow I have to deliver some bad news to right. so and you know, ex client. And like Amy said, I'm going to, maybe I'll use one of the, the techniques to sort of maybe soften the blow a little bit, but I also, you know, you can cope ahead and start to think about how might that feel to somebody? Mm-hmm. Okay. They're going to, they're, they lost, a, they lost the deal. Okay. How might that feel to them? They're going to feel probably pretty defeated. They're going to feel mm-hmm. sad. They're going to feel maybe angry. Um, maybe they'll blame me. Um, you know, you you sort of need to go through all of these different instances in your mind and, and put yourself in their position and say, okay, let's let's cope for all of these. Let's cope ahead for all of these different uh, in, inevitabilities. Um, and mm-hmm. we don't know which, which one's going to actually turn out, but I'm going to prepare ahead so that when they respond with whatever their emotional response is, which is going to be probably severe, um, I am going to have a, don't worry, it's okay. 
because mm-hmm. X. And, mm-hmm. and that, that I think is, is really the key because I know even as a home buyer myself um, and home seller, I've, I've done that several times. I just, all, all I ever want in a transaction. So think of me as more of like a, a lay person. Um, I just want somebody to go, it's all going to be okay. Yeah, like that's totally. all I ever really mm-hmm. want somebody to say, somebody who I trust. That and then here's what we're going to do next. Exactly. You want to know it's going to be okay. Yes. And then they're the ones that are going to move the ball down the field. And that's what we have to do as agents. We say it's okay, but here's the plan. And I loved your idea of um, as an agent kind of taking in the shock of the bad news first, because let's face it, there is an emotional component that we go through. We get so tight and close to these clients of ours and their loss, let's face it, is our loss. It's, you know, the better the agent, sometimes the more emotional or, you know, the harder we can take it. But the best agents understand that, take the emotion in, allow themselves to be sad, be frustrated, be all the things that you need to be, allow it to pass and then recognize I have to be the one that can go in with a, we got this attitude, there's something else for us out there and, you know, be able to remove the emotion to allow the clients to have as much emotion as needed. And I think that's important because sometimes an agent will get the bad news and doesn't take that time to process it and get to where they need to. And they'll call the client too fast. And then everybody's emotional, right? And then no one's helping anyone. So, you know, and I think that is practice, right? I think there's a million times probably early on that I was super emotional and called the client right away. Sure. And I thought, ooh, that didn't go so well. So, you know, it's a lot of this. And, and what I also say to so many agents is you can be a serial student though, too. You can read books. You can, we have a lot of classes. We've got a lot of programs that you can be in at some point. You got to jump off the diving board straight into the deep end and you got to just start, you know, working and trying to figure it out and make a ton of mistakes. And look, we've all survived. DJ, you're sitting here. I'm sitting here. How many times have we blown it? Probably uh, more than like five years. times today. Even <laughs> I've blown it many, many times uh, today. And it's, it's a, it's a matter of effort and, yeah. and discipline and, mm-hmm. and discipline. Uh, I don't even want to say discipline. That's, that's a word nobody likes. Uh, habits, habits. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's mm-hmm. build good habits. Uh, oh. Yeah. Discipline is a word that we should probably just get do away with. It's, it's a and word give that give ourselves is- some grace. You know, the other thing that I see oh. so much with agents is we're so hard on ourselves. You know, I was in yes. this group earlier And this agent was just sort of not beating up on himself a little bit, but he just was just talking about his lack of confidence. And it was so great because we have these accountability groups that meet every other week. It's five of them. And, and two of his other team members were like, Robert, you are like amazing because he was talking about reaching out to an agent in his community that I think is retiring from the business and a mutual friend of theirs had said, you guys should meet because maybe you'd be a great agent to take his business over. And so this guy, Robert was like, Oh, I don't know. Like what if I'm not a good enough agent or I'm not the personality type that he would want. And somebody from his group said, Robert, you know what? Instead of you thinking that he may be your lucky star, you might be his. Don't cut yourself, you know, so, you know, you need to cut yourself some more slack. You are amazing. And so I just, I see that so often amongst our agents. And, you know, I think one of the things that is also really important, you know, this is a lonely business as a real estate agent. You know, we can come into the office and we all sit around the water cooler and talk about our clients. But a lot of times we go back and we're really the ones dealing with a lot of these people's situations and that's really hard and so you know on our end of things when we really try to support from a management standpoint is really being able to see the agent as the individual you know how are things going how is work how's life you know that means so much for an agent to feel like they are really seen um you know and it's just to never underestimate that because you know you'd be surprised some of the agents out there, the things that they have going on and how they are still able to carry themselves with such grace, running businesses, you know, and are all CEOs having to support themselves. It's just, um, you know, it's just amazing. So I just think for so many agents that are out there, you're all rock stars and just recognize, you know, what you do is incredible and just believe in yourself. Cause I don't, I don't think agents always hear that enough. They should hear it from themselves, but they don't. Yeah. And, and they should, 
you should be in, in community, find mm-hmm. your community. Um, even though you may be an individual producer and you're producing big, big numbers, find your tribe, find yeah. people that can help support you, whether it, whether it's your, your brokerage or whether it's just a community of, of other agents. Um, you know, we are in a sort of communal kind of business. It's, I mean, it's cooperative for sure. Mm-hmm. And, um, or at least it's supposed to be. And so this, this is an opportunity, you know, you'd, even though you might be working remotely, which pretty much everyone is these days, mm-hmm. um, you know, you don't have to not be, you, you don't have to be apart from, from people. So right. this idea of, you know, get support, get, and at properties does a great job of this. So we should really talk about, you know, it, if anyone out there is, and you guys are not just in the Chicagoland area anymore, mm-hmm. um, yeah. you're kind of all over. Let's talk about that. So if agents yeah. are wanting a different experience, maybe they're not getting uh, a certain amount of, of, of support or training or resources at their current brokerage and maybe thinking about switching, looking to see what other options exist. This is the sure. year we're seeing a lot of movement. Um, how should agents um, start to explore Christie's uh, at properties? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously locally, we're at Properties Christie's International Real Estate and around Chicagoland, uh, Wisconsin and um, Michigan. Uh, But we do have affiliates. You know, we've got at Properties in Indianapolis, at Properties in Dallas. We've got an amazing affiliate in Detroit. Um, Up in Wisconsin, we've got an amazing affiliate in Madison, um, in the Madison area. And and then now the cool thing is we've got some really great um, agents just across the country. Uh, Christie's Sereno out in California down to John R. Woods at Naples. We've got a lot of really great people. And, and really what's happening and what I'm enjoying so much is what we have built as a culture and um, an opportunity to train and develop agents. We are really figuring out how to take that and expand that out into our affiliate network. Uh, so a lot of the programming that we do, a lot of the, the support that we try to give to our agents from accountability to you know how to develop a great listing presentation, You know we've got a really comprehensive approach to training and our technology, you know, platform has been really phenomenal uh, to support the back end of our agents. So I would just say if anybody is interested, it's easy to find me on social media or, uh, you know, you can email me, but, um, you know, we're, we really feel like it's also the idea of attraction. You know, I, I don't recruit as actively anymore, but when I did, you know, I would always say, this is about you finding a great fit, but it's also about us finding a great fit, right? It should really feel like a partnership. And I also feel like it isn't so much us hiring agents, but it's really them deciding who do they want to hire to help them run their business? And how can we be that little engine pack behind them just to really make sure that they can take off? And, you know, I feel just so fortunate because I think, you know, culture for us has always been a really big thing. And DJ, you said this earlier, we kind of just, you know, we're growing and did a lot of things. And I think one of it is like, we really just focused on not so much what everybody else was doing. We really just took a look at like, you know, what should we be focusing on uh, as a company? And, you know, the question that we always have is, are we doing it good enough or can we be doing it better? And yeah. are agents feeling supported or can we be doing better? And, you know, and so we really kind of just came from that vein. And and I think the funniest is we've just never taken ourselves, you know, we are very serious about creating successful agents, but we also have a lot of fun. And, you know, I think sometimes that goes out of people's lives too fast when it comes to work. And I think it's finding the fun again, even though the market has its challenges, there's so much opportunity out there. And sometimes when we let ourselves go to have a little fun, it's amazing how the universe will open up for us, you know? Agreed. Perfect, perfect way to wrap up the show. Um, Amy, thank you so, so much. Yes. Go out, have fun. Oh, I I am so happy to, I hope to have you on in the future as well. I want everyone who's listening, who has made it this far to please, please subscribe to uh, Coffee with Ke- with Amy and Kevin. So you can find that on Instagram and YouTube. Should they do a weekly show, talk about the sort of state of the market, what you can do to uh, keep your business moving forward at Coffee with Amy and Kevin. We will have links to that in the show notes. If you are in any of the markets that Amy mentioned, and you're interested in exploring other brokerages at Properties, Christie's International would love to talk to you. So please check them out at properties.com, atproperties.com. And um, on behalf of our audience, we want to thank Amy uh, 
for her time today. She is a busy, busy woman, and she was kind enough to be on our show. So thank you on behalf of the audience, Amy. And on behalf of Amy and myself, we want to thank our audience for continuing to support our show. Uh, please tell a friend. Think of one other realtor that could benefit from hearing this, this conversation with Amy and send them a link to this episode. The best way you can do that, send them over to our website. Keepingitrealpod.com is where all of our episodes live. Also on every podcast directory out there, just search for Keeping It Real, hit that subscribe. Amy, thank you so, so much. I had a great time oh, with you, you and excited Likewise. to... Um, to have you on in the future because I want to talk to you about more, more things related <laughs> to how to be, uh, how to become successful in real estate. So oh, well, Amy, thank you. Thank you and it. we will see everybody on the next episode. Bye everybody.